If you don't know, Ignition is software we've designed to have all the key features needed for today's changing world. We put a lot of time, resources, and development into creating software that addresses each of these deep needs of organizations. I thought that you might be interested in understanding some of these features that we have in the software and how they line up with these different needs that organizations have. So Ignition is IoT ready. It handles MQTT spark plug, it lets you connect to intelligent devices and infrastructure, connects to the cloud, and can handle large scale data collection. It bridges the OTIT gap. It connects to any PLC, relational database, or ERP system. So you can make data accessible at all levels of your organization. On the PLC side, we have a number of driver suites that are available directly inside Ignition. And then it also supports OPC, so it can connect to external OPC servers uh, and connect through any of the driver suites that you might have there. It is based on open standard technologies. So SQL, OPC UA, MQTT, Python, REST, SOAP, uh, the list goes on, right? Um, the Ignition platform does work with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux operating systems, and its web clients can run in standard web browsers, as well as in apps, native apps in iOS and Android. So your iPhone, your iPad, any of your Android devices can run clients. It's web deployable on-premise or in the cloud. It either runs as a web application, like was just mentioned, or it can be deployed from a web browser. Uh, quick deployment for on-prem or in the cloud, and modules for Ignition are available for putting operational tag data into cloud services directly, like AWS and Azure. It's made for mobile as well as desktop. It works equally well on mobile, desktop, and plant floors if you're using the modern visualization options inside Ignition. It's first-class solution for building mobile standard applications, and you can build mobile first applications from the ground up and set things up so that screens look great on any size of device. And in fact, our demo project uh, demonstrates exactly that. Uh, it supports remote monitoring and process control. Ignition lets you easily set up remote connections to anything in your enterprise and to easily build out web applications for mobile devices and desktops. It easily allows you to bring in data from the field and edge devices to central easily add capabilities like reporting, alarming, and enterprise administration, and also lets you increase your number of tags and connections without going over budget. Uh, we have that unlimited licensing model built in directly into Ignition. It supports edge computing. So Ignition Edge is a product that lets you extend data collection, visualization, and system management to the edge. You can choose edge solutions for local HMIs, uh, for field devices, for field data collection, intelligence, uh, communication. We have a product called Edge Compute that allows for local intelligence and local compute on edge devices. Data synchronization is built in. Publication of field device data is available at the edge. It's very scalable in general, uh, talking about Ignition in general here. You can deploy at a single site, at multiple sites in the cloud, build in various architectures, add redundancy, manage data and projects from a central location. And of course, on the security side, it has very modern set of cybersecurity features, it supports TLS 1.2, 1.3, um, SSL, uh, although SSL is kind of an umbrella term there, if you want to be technical. Um, TLS is the thing that's really important when you're talking about the support. Those encryption protocols are built in. We support federated identity providers, so OpenID Connect, SAML, two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication systems Ignition can plug into. As a model for user permissions, allows users to follow the Purdue model and other network architectures if they choose as well. And it also has an unlimited licensing model. It's not limited by the clients and tags, but by the server. Uh, there's no additional cost for more clients, more tags, more connections. The licensing doesn't impose arbitrary limits on your scalability or system performance. Kevin, that is a lot. And while that's all true, somehow I think that you and I um, might not be fully credible because we might be just minorly biased since we both work with inductive automation. So I want to basically take a minute and um, you know, not ask you to take our word for it because Jeremiah is here from Streamline Control. 
really, really to tell you about a real project. Uh, uh, they replaced a, a legacy midstream SCADA system with a high performance SCADA system that leveraged an IoT architecture. And the ignition was an important part of that project. So, Jeremiah, can you um, just tell us more about the project? Anything you want to share about it? Sure, Don. So I'll just go through a, a high level list of requirements that the client uh, gave to Streamline. Many of them are pretty standard, others were pretty challenging, um, but basically they were looking for a solution that had an offsite disaster recovery or backup location. They needed a solution to collect and communicate da data seamlessly over VSAT and a private cellular network at locations throughout the United States. Uh, they must support best practices around cybersecurity, including the Purdue model. They must have the ability to have a centralized management of all the nodes within the system. Uh, the ability to push data into the enterprise for immediate consumption to build out operational dashboards uh, and the ability to support a local HMI and an edge node all in one platform. Those are some of the upfront requirements that were a little challenging. Uh, but there were challenges that came with the project um, when you're in the weeds, so to speak. One, a uh, couple of them are, how do I build a common HMI structure on assets with a variety of equipment footprints? How do I build out templates that are repeatable when my tags are so varied? How do I implement yoking in a repeatable and logical manner? How do I leverage all the hard work building displays in vision on the per perspective side in order to stand up an operational twin of the system for enterprise users. What mechanisms are in place to ensure that data collected at the edge makes its way up into the enterprise? Do I have structured and repeatable approach for bringing SCADA data and non-SCADA data into the enterprise? For example, we can start to bring back more measurement data from flow computers, additional data that is not typically needed in a SCADA environment. There is definitely a lot of of things and, and lessons and challenges uh, to go through. Instead, I think the best way uh, to look at this is to see what Streamline built from an architecture perspective. Well, as you can see, it's just a bunch of boxes with arrows. Uh, makes it look pretty easy. But, but let's just uh, unpack this a little bit. We use MQTT Distributor as our middleware operational backbone. These are brokers distributed at each control center. For the Purdue fans out there, this all sits on layer three and below. Edge nodes are distributed throughout the pipeline system, as you can see by the boxes below. Communication is through VSAT and cellular, allowing for two communication paths. Although the drawing only shows one arrow, the edge needs to be able to swap between communications me mediums seamlessly. We use Sirius Link's uh, MQTT modules to facilitate this. The ability to swap paths is built into the product. I really love the modules that Arlen and his team at Sirius Link built. It really makes all of this possible. Edge nodes are used here to concentrate field data. One super critical piece is we leverage custom properties to describe tag data in the edge, basically creating a real-time distributed database. This allows for dynamic displays, contextualization, and, and automation at the SCADA side and at the enterprise side. Really powerful stuff, thanks to Sparkplug B. Non-SCADA data is segregated at the edge, but still uses communication backbone that SCADA does. SCADA or Ignition will never see this information because it's not subscribing to it. Here we start to realize the potential of this architecture. SCADA will always have priority, but we can now leverage a common architecture to push information where it needs to go. Taking full advantage of the operation uh, the OT backbone, we can stand up a hot backup control center in an offsite location. That runs independent of the main control system. Should there be a disaster and need to fail over, the controllers head to the center and it can operate at the click of a button. QA, dev, testing environments are all built in another box over here. This allows for engineers, developers to work, test, and then push changes into production, all built into their uh, this is seamless with Ignition's EAM module. This is important. It allows us to expand the ecosystem, test on live data, but not impact the production system, which is so critical. An environment where integrators can work and test using the same information from the production environment seems trivial, but from my experience, there's always some risks and challenges with this. 
you're interfacing with OPC servers, connecting to devices natively on a production SCADA system that could cause some upsets. This is even more challenging uh, on legacy systems with serial devices. Here with this architecture, we're just listening for data. It's very powerful. Additionally, we now have our environments to test patches and updates on before we roll it out to our production system. Off of the operational backbone, we build out applications using Ignition uh, or Ignition Edge inside the control network. These aren't edge of network per se, they're more of a self-contained application to analyze and interpret and then publish information back into the operational backbone. So we're beginning to apply the concepts of edge inside the control room at layer three of the Purdue model. Application like monitoring batches now reside in an application outside of the SCADA system, meaning not combined into a larger project and running independent. We can then modify, test, and roll out these applications separate from a larger SCADA system rollout. Finally, I'd like you to look at the part on the right. Off of the enterprise system, we can now publish data into the enterprise by subscribing and passing data into enterprise brokers. This is where the fun really begins. We're beginning to realize how this architecture puts real-time data into users' hands at the enterprise. Streamline calls this interface the mobile business interface. And as you can see on the next slide, I'm gonna show you more boxes with more arrows. There's a lot going on here, and I'll speak in more detail uh, about this at ICC. But to unpack some of this, we have a vision-based HMI, high-performing, beautiful displays, two-click navigational philosophy, layered screens, repeatable templates-based, yoking and the like. All the production data is collected and published to the enterprise interface. For security out there, for security people out there, we can put this at layer 3.5 or the DMZ to have a level of indirection to the enterprise. At the enterprise is a prospective ignition instance. We decided to use this because it really has all the features of a modern scalable operational dashboarding and application tool set. It has built in time series and historical services, tags, components. This is essentially how mobile and business seniors interface with the system. We can now build and develop dashboards, applications that service enterprise users outside of the SCADA system, but leveraging the same real-time information perspective. At end Ignition is a perfect IIoT system that is, allows for our clients to IDA and build out applications and use cases to enhance their operations without the need for building it into SCADA. For example, Pipeline operators travel hundreds of kilometers or miles of pipe and through their mobile phone, they can access securely the state of the equipment, trends, control room notes in real time on their phone. There's no RDP, there's no jump servers to manage, no data historian groups to coordinate data from field to enterprise. It's all automatic, it's all there at their fingertips. Well, that concludes my presentation for now. I'll be going into more detail of this and other projects similar to, similar to this that Streamline has built for our clients at ICC, which is detailed on the next slide. Jeremiah, that was great. Thank you so much. And there are a lot of questions here. We're gonna to get to them. Just to emphasize what you just said about ICC, we have a Discover Gallery at the 2021 Ignition Community Conference. Uh, this project and others you will see focused on there. Um, and our compliments to everyone at Street 9 that really did the work on this innovative project. So for all of you in the audience, if you want to see more of these projects, then come to the Discover Gallery at, at uh, ICC this year. Uh, you can also check out the archives from 2020. Discover Gallery is really, it's where we showcase top ignition projects from all around the world, across multiple industries, including this project here. So it's something I'd certainly recommend that you uh, take a look at.